All right, so welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the analytics and how we're going to actually make it so that we can render all of the analytics on the dashboard. So in the last video, what we did was we, uh, and we, we basically banned the user and then whenever we banned the user, we saved a record in the database. So that way we know when we banned the user, who we banned, et cetera, et cetera. And the whole point of that is so we can go ahead and reference uh, that later. Okay. And more useful, more useful is we can actually take that, take all of those guild band logs and we can uh, create a visual visualized uh, version of that data, AKA chart. So right now uh, what I did, what I went ahead and did uh, is I actually just populated the database with some fake data. I mean, today is January 10th and the whole goal that we want to do, the, the, the whole goal that we, uh, that we uh, are trying to reach is to basically create a chart where we can show all of the guild bands uh, for the past week. So from today, today is January 10th. So we want to show it from the 10th all the way up until the third, I believe, or I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, all the way until January 4th, because that's one week, seven days. We want to show the past seven days, which includes today. Okay. And we also will have an option where we can show the past 30 days as well. So usually uh, some applications they have like, uh, they have like kind of like a drop down box where you can select uh, how far back you want to show results for. Uh, what we'll do is we'll set it up so that way we can just show the first or not the first, the last seven days. And then later on, once we finish that, we'll actually make it so that you can show the last 30 days as well. Okay. So uh, on Chart.js, which is the library that we are going to use, we're actually going to use React Chart.js, uh, which gives us uh, Chart.js components for React because that's the library. Uh, well, that's the front end the library that we're using. And the chart is going to look something like this. Let's, it's just going to be a basic line chart. Uh, if you want, they have different types of charts too. They have bar charts. They have uh, radar charts. They have donut and pie charts. But I think for something like analytics, I think a line chart is perfectly fine. Uh, so we'll go ahead and use that. So you can see that right over here. Uh, obviously, these are months, January, February, March, April. Uh, what we'll do instead is we'll just show like the actual, uh, the date, like for example, um, for example, this right over here, all the way on the left, this would show like the, the seventh day before uh, today. So it would show January 4th and then January 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, so that's seven. And then the line chart, each point will basically just be the number of guild bands that were, that were occurred on that day. So if we were to go to the database table, you can see that we have it uh, formatted, not formatted, but we have our uh, data in such a way where we have the issued on, which is just a date time. And you can see that we have bands. Like I said, these are just fake fake uh, data that I, that I use just to make everything work. But obviously this could be realistic data too. All I just did was I just used the command multiple times and it would just create a record in the database. Okay, but you can see that right over here that we have this issued on column and we can see the date that the ban was issued on or the date that this record was created on so you can see that right over here it was created on january 9th january 9th 8th 5th 4th 3rd uh, obviously like i said these, this is all fake data i just you know subtracted the date so that it could go back a couple days just to just for demonstration purposes obviously but as you use your bot as you ban users from your guild over time this would obviously populate to realist this this would be realistic data of course Okay, and so let's say, for example, uh, I think there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine records that were created on January 10th. Okay, so what that would mean would be on January 10th, you would see on the chart, it would, it would have, it, it, it would, it would be the value of nine records. Okay, so you can start to imagine how your graph would look like on each day or based off of the statistics for each day. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do is in order for us to actually get the data to render on the front end, we're actually gonna have to go to our back end first. We're gonna have to set up uh, an API route so to get the actual guild bands. And then we're gonna have to actually go to the front end and then fetch those guild bands so that we can actually render data on the front end. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to make a quick video just to explain the whole uh, purpose of this. All right, so 
we're inside the nest.js project right now and what we need to do is first off we need to actually create the entity for guild ban log because we created it on the discord bot project but we had not created it for the nest.js project yet so we're gonna have to do that so of course we're going to have to just copy the entity so let me do that and then just paste it inside the uh well we're gonna have to create a new file so let me do that guild ban log ts and we'll just paste it in here and it's literally just going to be the exact same thing okay now i know this could be a little bit problematic well not really problematic but it could be annoying to kind of just like copy and paste the same entity over and over again you can imagine it'd be a little bit annoying and hard to maintain if you have a bunch of different if you have like a bunch of different um entities that you need to kind of share between the api and the bot one thing that i think uh would be great is probably creating like some kind of middle layer between the api and the bot to communicate so that way you can just update it in one area and that's it but uh even then it could be a little bit tricky though but i'll probably uh figure that out on my own time and then if i find a uh a good viable solution i'll share it with you all later but don't worry about it for now because we don't have to worry about this because we don't have too many entities and it's not going to be super difficult to maintain this anyways okay so we created the guild ben log let's go ahead and import this inside our index.ts file and we're gonna so that way uh when we export it from this entities array it'll actually get registered inside the type orm configuration okay so let's do that and this is also known as a barrel file which is a good strategy to pretty much export a bunch of different uh variables or constant values that you need or just really anything so that way you don't have to like individually export or import every single uh every single variable or class or method that you need in a file okay so for example we have export cons entities we add that to the array the guild band log and that automatically just gets applied right over here okay so now if we were to go into our database um or not go into our database we would actually be able to interact with guild band log database table because we have that entity registered in our nest.js project so now that we have done that uh what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create uh, an endpoint. So I think the best thing that we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll go inside the guilds module because it makes sense because this belongs to the guild. Okay, anything that's to do with guilds, guild configuration stuff, we'll put that inside the guild, the guilds module. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an endpoint. So this is the guilds controller. And we're going to go ahead and create a get. And I'll just call this uh, get uh guild bands so uh I th i'm thinking this endpoint is going to be slash let's see it's slash guild slash bands so like that okay or actually uh wait you need the guild id forgot about that so the id of the guild and then the resource that we want which is bands okay i think that's how discord does that i think let me check get guild bands slash guilds guild id bands perfect okay awesome and it makes sense too to do it this way because we obviously need the guild id okay so uh we now have the route and now what we need is the actual uh we we need to use the param decorator to get the guild id similar how we've been doing it before so we'll use at param guild id and then we're gonna call this guild id and the type is going to be a string okay so um let me see there's also other parameters that i think we'll need to at some point we'll need to obviously um we'll need date ranges of course because this endpoint isn't just going to give us back uh it's not just going to give us back you know every single guild band we're obviously going to filter out by the date range we'll probably save that for another episode though for now all we're going to do is we're just going to fetch a database and then we're going to go ahead and just return everything back okay I just want to, the reason why I'm, I'm skipping the date range is because I want to actually, because the, the main goal right now is just to render all the data on the front end. Uh, and then once we, once we can see that all the data is being rendered uh, on the chart, we can then start to play around with it and start filtering out based off of, uh, you know, date ranges, for example. Okay. So now that we have this get guild span function, uh what we're going to do is we're going to go into the service class so guild service so i'm going to go into the interface first 
and we're going to create the abstract method which is just going to be get guild bands and we're going to take in a guild id and this is just going to return a promise and the resolved value is going to be an array of guild band log instances so hopefully that makes sense we are returning multiple guild band logs so it makes sense to return an array of them so now that we have uh, created the abstract method inside our service or our interface, we do need to go to the actual implementation, which is guilds.service.ts. And we need to go ahead and implement the get guild bands method. So async, uh, let's see, I don't think we'll need to use async. Uh, let's do get guild bands. Okay. And all we're going to do here is just call. Uh, let's see, it's going to be the guild config repository, or actually, wait a minute. No, uh, it's going to be a different repository, actually. Um, inject repository. So let's go ahead and inject the guild band log repository. I'm just going to call this, uh, yeah, I'll call this band log repository. So this is similar how we... Uh, how we named it and type annotated it in uh, the Discord bot earlier inside the constructor. Only difference is that we don't have to call it get repository like we did in the Discord bot because we have dependency injection right over here. That's going to get the actual instance and assign it to this variable and it does it for us so we don't have to worry about it. Now we are going to get an error. Uh, well, let me actually first run the application if I haven't already. Uh, okay, well, this is not the error that I was talking about. But the error that we are going to get is something with the dependencies. So we do need to make sure we go into the guilds.module.ts file. And inside the type orm for feature method call, we do need to add the guild band log entity inside this array. Similar to how we did it with guild configuration, because we are trying to use the repository inside this module. And we need to make sure we add the correct entity right over here. We have to make sure we do that with every single entity repository that we are working with. Okay, but um, let's go ahead and now reference band log repository. So, and we're going to call find. And the condition that we're going to search on is the guild ID like that. Okay, and now that we've done that, this will pretty much return all the guild, all of the uh, guild uh the guild bands based off of the guild id okay now remember this is not this isn't, this isn't filtered based off of the the date range like i said we're going to save that for later i just i just want to make sure we are able to actually get all of the guild bands first and then once we're able to get that once we're able to render the chart then we'll actually start filtering out by date ranges okay so we got to go back to the controller and we're just going to call that method that we just implemented the uh, the get guild bands so turn this dot guild service get guild bands pass in the guild ID and there we go so to test this out we just go to our uh, we go to our uh, local host slash API uh, let's see slash I think it's guilds and we need the guild ID so the guild ID I will just uh, grab the guild ID where we banned all those users. So this is my guild ID and then slash bands. And you're going to see that this gives us an array of uh, guild band log instances. Okay. And you can see that it's all right over here. There's about uh, 30 of these records or 31. And literally all we're going to have to do now is just go to the front end on our React application, fetch this endpoint. And we're going to actually have to do a little, do a little bit of, uh, do a couple things. Uh, I think we might actually handle this on the back end, which we'll probably do in the next video. Because what we're going to have to do is we either have to do this on the front end or the back end. But essentially, we need to basically um, get every single, or get every single, uh, we, need, we need to categorize this into dates, right? Because essentially, we, what we need to do is we need to search the database based off of the, la for all of the guild uh, band log records from today. The current time uh all the way up until seven days ago okay so today's the 10th so we have to search all the way up until the fourth because that's seven days ago so uh you can either do that on i think the best thing to do is obviously handle this on the back end so i think we might actually need to do that first before we actually uh go over to the front end 
So uh, I'll save that for the next episode because I think we are out of time. So I'll see you all in the next episode where we're actually going to set up date ranges so we can actually query the database uh, based off of the date ranges. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all in my next episode. Peace out.